Hi, this is Mark at learnhowtogarden.com and in today's update on the 10 Minute Gardener, uh, we're going to talk about chilies, one of my favourite things to grow, one of the most productive things you can grow in your garden and certainly one of the best returns on your time. Um, really popular at the minute growing chilies. Uh, and as we covered in our first episode, you know, the sowing of the seeds and getting them into their first pots, chilies are one of those things that it's very important to keep the labels in. These four chilies look very similar, I think fairly similar. Uh, if we were to go on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, this one here is a sweet chilli. Uh, probably, as far as heat goes, would score 1 perhaps. Very, very nice, beautiful roasted. Um, this one, Ring of Fire, my all-time favourite chilli. Probably scores 5 to 6. Really useful, makes a blisteringly hot paprika, but is gorgeous. I use it all the time, at least twice a week, in my tomato sauces. Um, really love it. And then these two beauties at the back, this one here um, is called Trinidadian Seven Pot, probably would score 10 out of 10 on your heat trials. And this is a Dorset Naga, which would probably score 11 out of 10. These two have both in the last few years been the world's hottest chili. It, it very much depends. I mean, there isn't a hottest chili. Um, it depends on the year, uh, how they're grown, and then the plant in particular, you know, but <coughs> they're both terrifyingly hot. Uh, we're growing these more as an experiment, just see how hot they are. Plus, um, my son Tate, who's a chef, uh, is very, very keen to try these in some food. And in fact, um, he and a couple of friends, one of whom is also a chef, uh, are going to do the chili challenge, where they're going to actually chew these raw for 30 seconds and then see who can hold out longest before they actually have a glass of milk. Anyway, what these are going to give us are chilies that look a bit like this. These are some of the sort of last remaining ones from last year that I've got, you know, this sort of classic wrinkly, wonderful chili. These are quite hot babies, really. I shouldn't be handling them with uh, out gloves, but I will wash my hands very thoroughly um, with orange swole figure afterwards. Certainly don't go near your eye. I mean, it really will sting worse than you could possibly imagine. And there is an awful thing called chili willy, which I have suffered from before, which for those uh, men who are watching this, we really don't want that either. So, when you're going to pot them on, the thing with potting on chilies, like a lot of plants, you don't want to over pot them. You don't want to go to the, their final pot or their, their biggest pot because it will slow up their growth. It's as though they have too, too much room. If you put them into uh, a pot that gives them room to grow but their roots can fill the sides, they actually sort of, they seem to grow quicker. So I tend to sort of go from this size, which is what we first pot them on to, into just a small two litre pot. Some of these will actually finish growing in only a five litre pot. That's how I grow most of my chilies. That way you get a very early harvest. They set their chilies very early. You get a really good crop, but not as big as it could be. And with Ring of Fire, what we're going to do is plant one of these in the ground in the greenhouse. We're going to put the pot next to the one in the ground and we're going to sort of keep a diary update to show you the difference. You know, how many chilies we get off each and sort of at what point we get them. So the first thing you want to do is mix your compost mix. Now I have found that the best way to grow these is a 50-50 mix. 50% 50 of a soil based compost. John Ennis number 3 is So this is quite heavy, quite claggy, but does hold on to moisture really well, holds its nutrients really well. And 50% the much lighter multi-purpose. And over the years, I've found that a mix of 50-50 of these gives you the best results. If you can hear a cat in the background, I'm very sorry. It's uh, my quite elderly Siamese who's called Princess Lily, who um, it's one of the warmest days we've had in the summer so far. So she's decided to come out and join us. So we'll just mix these together and then we'll show you how you go from there. Mix our compost well together. Just rub it between your hands. It's quite a sensual thing to do this, really. Uh, get it nice and smooth. The next thing, get an empty pot the same size as the pot your chilies are growing in. Pop some compost in the bottom, pop in your empty pot and just fill round it. The reason for doing this is that we'll get a perfect pot sized hole which we can then take out once it's full, tap it down. There's no need to push. You don't want to get rid of all the air spaces. Remember that Plants need air to grow. They need air around their roots. 
and all you do is literally pop your chilli out. You can see this beautiful root system on this chilli. In it goes, pop, pop, done. Water gently with tepid water, preferably with rainwater. We should all be harvesting our rainwater if we can. Don't feed them at the moment. Overfeeding chilies or overfeeding most vegetables is one of the quickest ways to encourage green fly and aphids. You'll get soft, sappy growth that is really, really um, susceptible to attack by insects. Grow them hard, and by that I mean you know, there's enough food in this compost to keep them going for two to three weeks and then we'll use a very, very dilute feed of either our comfrey uh, or our liquid seaweed feed. So these will now pop up to the uh, greenhouse and like I say, we'll pop one of these ring of fires into the greenhouse border which I'll show you now. So here we are in the greenhouse. In fact, we're not in the greenhouse. We're in the polyton. It's just easier to film. We, but we do actually put some of the chilies in my mum's greenhouse. This is the ring of fire we've just potted on. This is from exactly the same batch and at exactly the same time. And that's going to actually be grown in the greenhouse, uh, in the actual soil in the bed. Now, although I'm a huge fan of no-dig beds, in my polyton or my greenhouse, I still very much like my bean bed outside. Uh, double dig it in the winter, it's got lots of manure and compost added to the, the second spit and then it, it's turned over every year. So there's already a lot of goodness in this soil. Um, but we're going to add some fertiliser. This is a uh, fish blood and bone, a pelleted fish blood and bone. You can probably see this on my hand. And uh, there's a lot sort of said on packets about, you know, so many ounces per square yard or so many grams. I was always taught that a good handful sort of per square yard or per square yard or per square meter, you know, certainly with an organic fertilizer like this will do its job. So basically what we're going to do is just spread this over and we're going to rake that gently into the sort of top um, five or six centimeters inch of soil. Um, when it comes to tools, one of the things you're not going to really be able to get by without is a rake. Uh, this rake is a really nicely balanced aluminium rake. It's about 32, 33 pounds, uh, about $40 in America. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't pay that for a rake. I bought this from a car boot sale. I think you have those in the States as well. Uh, it cost me the equivalent of two pounds 50 or about $3. Uh, and I use the rest of the money that I've saved to buy a, a half decent Pinot Grigio, which on a hot day like this is much better to drink. Uh, and we'll need a planting trowel. Now this is something that I did splash out on. This is a wonderful trowel by DeWitt. Very thin, very, very sturdy, very well made. Goes through the soil really well for planting. But the first thing we need to do is just rake this sort of soil very gently. And raking is one of those processes that is best done gently. You're not cultivating as such. You just at this point incorporating this fertiliser and you go backwards and forwards and then I come across a bit like a crisscross pattern. I know it seems, you know, for a lot of you out there you'll think why is he, you know, going through this? But for some people it's the first time, you know, and they, they haven't sort of done this before. They haven't raked, they haven't planted. We all learn, you know, from somewhere. We all start at the beginning, don't we, on every journey, you know. They say a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step and it's the same in gardening like everything else. We've got a support in place. This is a really sturdy bamboo cane. It's attached to a permanent wire that runs from end to end in our greenhouse. Um, but as long as you've got a sturdy support, now you need to get this in early. Uh, this is because I expect this chili to get really quite big. Uh, in pots I don't support them, but I am expecting it to get quite big. Get your support in early. If you don't have wires, uh, we've got a short video blog coming up in two or three days, which shows you how by just using uh, about 10 or 12 bamboos uh, and some proper knots that you would have learned in the Boy Scouts, you can make a really sturdy self-supporting frame. But uh, I digress, we'll get to that on the other blog. So taking your trowel and about a hand's width away from your support, basically, make a planting hole. Now this soil, as you can see, is incredibly well worked. You know, I can plant with my hand. We take 
our chili. Nice root system on this. That's the important bit with all your plants is your root system. That's basically what's going to give you your growth. Remember your leaves supply the energy, your roots give you your growth. That's uh, the easiest way to think about it. And that'll just need very gently watering in in a moment. And we're going to compare it with the one growing in a pot to show you that growing in pots, if you've got the right compost, will give you a really good yield, a really good return um, on your investment in this plant. It'll go from this little two litre pot to this little four litre and end up in this 10 litre pot. So, you know, that's where it's going to end up, sitting just here. And we'll have a direct comparison. I, I very much expect the one in the pot to flower earlier uh, and also we will get our chilies off it quite quite uh, you know a bit earlier probably two or three weeks I suspect but not as many um, but it's sort of you know it, it's well well worth growing they're one of those plants that you, they really do give you good value for money a couple of plants will give you enough paprika or chili to use in your dishes throughout the winter if you wonder what the uh, tapes for this is one of my son's being highly amusing, my mom Betty, who the garden is, uh, you know, named after the ten minute garden, is a real fiddler, and she sort of can't help walking through the greenhouse, all the polytunnel, and having a quick fiddle with this, that, or the other. Uh, and last year she was walking through here, saw what she thought was a, uh, a green pepper, sweet pepper, picked it, popped it in her mouth, and uh, from all accounts was uh, not amused as they say as an ex-headmistress she does have that voice she can use when she's not amused still uh, and wasn't amused and i'm reliably informed the only thing worse than getting chilly in your eyes to get chilly under your dentures so uh, this is their way of saying nan nan don't touch this so we'll just water that in and uh, keep an eye on it show you how it grows show you how we feed it show you how we tie it in uh, i hope that's been of some use i hope that's got you up to speed with where we are with our chilies this one, like I say, is quite happily growing in this pot. It'll go very soon into its four litre pot, but we'll give you a two week, two minute update, as we say. And uh, that's all we've got in this video for now. So this is Mark from learnhowtogarden.com saying thanks a lot for watching. and I hope you enjoy it.